Hello and welcome to this episode of Luminar News. My name is Jacob Bors and I'm here to bring you up to speed with the latest Luminar updates. Just before we're going to start, I want to remind you to subscribe to our channel to make sure that you don't miss one of our future episodes or updates. Skylum is back with another update for Luminar Neo Mark 1.6.4. The release comes only 5 days after the last update, mainly focusing on fixing application bugs. As this is the 4th update in a month, today we will jump into Luminar Neo and highlight all the changes and updates we received since the big update number 6. Now as always, before we going to start, let's make sure that we have the latest version of Luminar Neo installed on our computer. Now this is the great time to mention that this episode of our Luminar Neo news is powered by our Luminar Neo Power Bundle. For a little fee, you will get over 986 new elements to power up your Luminar Neo tool. You will get extra high definition skies, overlays, textures, backgrounds, sky objects, LUTs and presets to transform your images with just a few clicks. To find out more about it, make sure you visit our website cleverphotographer.com and to get the best price, simply follow the link in the description of this video. Now as you can see, I am in Luminar Neo and I am in the catalog module. The first thing we want to do is to find out what version of Luminar Neo we have now. To do that, simply navigate to the top left corner of your screen and click on the Luminar Neo logo. Here find the About Luminar Neo and click on that. That will open a new window here and as you can see we are now running the version 1.6.3. So that's the older version, we are one version back, so we need to install the update. Let's close this by using this little red button and to install the update we need to follow the same step first, we're gonna go back to our Luminar Neo logo. Click on that and click on check for update. It takes a second, it will open another window and it will tell us that the new version of Luminar Neo is available. Once we are ready, we can simply click on install update. It will start to download the update, extract it and make it ready for the installation. Once the update is downloaded and extracted, it will prompt you with another window where you can now click on install and relaunch. When the update and installation is finished, you will be returned back into the application. Now there are two things you should do before you start to use the application. The first one is to double check the version of Luminar Neo. And once again, just like earlier, just head back to the top left corner of your screen, Luminar Neo logo, and then click on About Luminar Neo. You can see that now we are on the version 1.6.4, which is the latest. And the second thing you want to do is to double check that all your plugins are installed. If you're using Luminar Neo together with Photoshop, Lightroom, Affinity Photo or anything like that, to do that simply again back to the Luminar Neo logo, click on that and click on installed plugin. Here just make sure that your Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Lightroom or any other application is installed. For me it's all good, so I can just click on done and start to use the application. So now we have the latest version of Luminar Neo installed and it's time to look at the different updates as they were coming through the four different updates. We're going to start with the update 1.6.1 which was focusing on faster imports, better localization and fixing some of the bugs in the app. So with that update we should have been able to import photos faster with a better localization on them. It's not really a way for me to show you that, however, that update came with another thing and that was update of the mood tool with the LUTs, which now looks cleaner and it's easier to use. So let me show you how that looks. So when we take this image and move it into edit module, here we can navigate towards our main toolbar, creative section and then our mood tool. In the past, when you click on the gray drop-down box, all the LUTs would be listed under each other and sometimes it would be really difficult to go through them and be able to choose and navigate through them. 
So now you can see that we have these little subcategories. We have the custom LUTs, which are the one we import from our computer, just like from our power bundle, autumn bundle, and so on. And then we have the LUTs that come with the application, like the cinematic tuning, creative, cross-processing, and portrait toning. Now, I know that many of you, just like me, are still waiting for the possibility to just hover over the LUT and get the preview of how that LUT will apply to the image. And let's hope that we're going to see this arriving soon. Now, moving eight days forward to the December 29, we have received the Luminar Neo 1.6.2. Once again, heavily focusing on the back fixes, and it also brought some improvements to the extension. What I'm talking about was the built-in face enhancer AI technology. Now, I know there was already a lot said about these features, so I'm not going to judge on how it works, and I'm sure it's something that will improve over the time. However, I still want to show you how it works. The idea of this face enhancer AI technology is that it will enhance faces and make them appear clearer and sharper in blurry or low resolution photos. So we have this image here and first thing we're gonna test is the upscale. So it's a paid extension. If you wanna learn more about it, we have a full video on it on our YouTube channel. So all we're gonna do is to take this image, drag and drop it on our upscale extension, and before we're going to click on upscale, we're going to go in the top right corner of the tool, click on the little wheel for the settings here, and we want to make sure that the face enhancer AI is checked. Once that's done, all we need to do is to click on upscale. Now the application will scan the image, it will upscale it, and it will enhance the face. So now we have the new upscale image right next to our image that we had done earlier. So let's have a look at the result. Let's have a look at the original image right here. And then let's have a look at the new upscale image with the face enhancer applied to it. Now it did pretty decent job. However, I think what lots of people don't like is that it doesn't actually sharpen, but it seems that it's kind of taking other images and applying them to the photo. So I think that the Enhancer AI or Face Enhancer AI has a long way to go. You can see that it adds stuff to the image which wasn't there before and it doesn't always work. So you really want to test it, try it and see how it works for you. And otherwise we need to be patient and see how it's going to improve over the time. So this is how it works for the upscale AI. Now let's see how it works for the Super Sharpen AI. So let's again select the image and move into the edit module. In the edit module, this time we're going to be heading into our extension section, open the Super Sharp AI, and now we have the face enhancer checkbox here. So let's check it. We can leave the sharpening on universal and let's just go for the low. Now the software will scan the image, apply the sharpening and also the face enhancer AI. Now, when it's finished, it will apply to the image and you can see that it did pretty much the same job as the upscale AI when it comes to improving the face. It did some additional sharpening as well. However, just comparing the face enhancer AI for super sharp AI and upscale AI, it does pretty much the same thing. So it's something to keep an eye on. The good thing with the super sharp AI is that you can use masking here. So for example, I was mentioning the kind of glitch here on the cap, which before looks like this. And after it looks like this, you could now use masking, use the brush, erase it. And then for example, erase this part, which you don't really like, you can bring the cap back. Also, if you don't like maybe anything with the hair, you can adjust it like this. And then you can maybe use part of it and work around with the tool. So now you get this before and after, and you can really play around with the tool and see if it's going to help and improve your image or if it's not going to do that. I think you really have to try it. It's a project by project based at the moment, and you just never know. It's always worth to give it a go and see where it's going to take you. Now, moving one step forward towards the update 1.6.3 that was released on the 26th of January, we had a few new things coming with this update other than fixing bugs. We have a new camera support for cameras like Canon EOS R6 Mark II or the Sony A7R5. 
we have also received the new for this photo feature for the sky ai tool i will show you that in a moment but most importantly this update arrived with the new onboarding guide which really seems to be very popular and i want to show you how it works again so once again, the update is here. I'm in the catalog module. And what you're going to be looking for is the sample images folder here. Now you can see the sample images in your all photos as well. If you scroll through them, for example, there is one. But the easiest way to see them is the sample images. Now you can see that we have five images here. They have this little icon in the top left corner. And when you select it and move it into edit module, you will see that you will get these little thumbnails on them, which will basically give you a suggestion of what you can do with the image. So taking just this example, we have the replace the sky and we have a boost with one slider option. So when you click on the thumbnail, so for example, the replace the sky, it will actually open the sky AI tool. Now you can use one of the sky suggestions or you can select one of the skies from your own library. In my case, I have some of the skies from our power bundle. So let's go for the drama. And let's say that we're just going to select this sky right here. The moment you apply the sky and apply the suggestion, you will see that the thumbnail disappear. So that's what happened there. Now you could continue, of course, make any other adjustments to your sky. However, you can also just leave it like this and move to the next suggestion. So the next suggestion is to boost the picture with one slider to improve the overall quality with the AI options. When you click on it, it once again opens another tool in your main toolbar. This time is the Enhance AI, and you can use the Accent AI to improve the image with one slider. You can also play around with the Sky Enhancer. And once again, just like before, once you start to use the tool, you will see that the suggestion disappears. When it's finished, you can close it and you can continue. And this is how it goes for all the other sample photos. When we go back into the catalog and let's say that we select the portrait photo and bring it back to the edit module, you will see that the thumbnails is once again here, this time about shaping the body. So you can click on it. It opens another suggestion. And this is the way you move forward and try different tools while using the onboarding guide. Additionally, the update 1.6.3 arrived with other plenty changes and improvements. For example, the raw files, you can now open them faster and export them faster. Plus also the AI masking got more precise and the alpha channel is now taken into account when using the transform and clone tools. Finally, with the update 1.6.3, I wanted to mention the sky AI tool. It now has the for this photo feature. Originally, this feature is known from the presets module, where when you are there on the top of your toolbar, you will see that there is basically a suggestion of a presets that should be suitable for this image. Well, now we have this also in our Sky AI tool. So when we go into the edit module and go into the Sky AI tool to replace the sky, rather than just having the sky selection, we have the for this photo feature here and it will give you two suggestions which you can or don't have to use and on the top of it you will have one other suggestion which will introduce you to a new sky bundle available on Skyloom. and if you click on this link it will bring you on the website and you will be able to purchase it there and finally the last update released before recording of this video is the one with the number 1.6.4 this update really just focusing on a smoother experience, fixing any of the bugs we may encounter when using Luminar Neo after some of the previous updates. So I hope that this will help you to round up all the updates we have received over the last month and we can now move forward on to the next updates which I'm sure will be coming our way soon. And that's all the news for today. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future news or updates. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name was Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.